Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new GPD G1 external GPU. Now I'm really excited about this and they're touting it as the world's smallest graphics card expansion dock. And it could very well be the smallest on the market right now as I'm making this video, but there's a lot more built into this little unit here that I'm excited about besides the size of it. And it really comes down to this eGPU supporting two different protocols. We've got true Thunderbolt 4, so we've got a real Thunderbolt 4 interface. And on the channel, I haven't been able to test a real Thunderbolt 4 dock. We always go with Thunderbolt 3 connected over Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4. And aside from that, this is an all-in-one Oculink eGPU, which comes in really handy if you have something like the GPD WinMax 2, or if you're using Oculink over an M.2 adapter with a mini PC, a full-size PC, or even a handheld that has an extra M.2 slot. So getting this thing out of the box, as you can see, it's super tiny. And one thing that kind of threw me off was uh, there was no power brick included, and that's because it's an all-in-one unit. You're just going to plug this right into the wall. It's got its own power supply built into the unit itself. It also has quite a lot of extra I.O. on it, but I think one of the best things about this is it's utilizing a Radeon RX 7600M. It is a mobile variant, but I'll tell you what, this thing definitely puts out some really good performance given the size of this unit. And if you do buy one of these, inside of the box, obviously, you're going to get the G1 itself. We also have our power cable. It's a little three-prong cable. Like I said, power supply is built in here a 40 gig Thunderbolt 4 cable. And since this is Thunderbolt 4, we can use a longer cable than we could with Thunderbolt 3. And of course, we've got the Oculink cable. And this is really where it's at with this little eGPU. You're gonna get the best performance over Oculink. And if you're not familiar with Oculink, basically this has been around for a long time. It's been used in servers for a while and it brings PCIe outside of the case. That's exactly how they explain it. The effective bandwidth is 63 gigs, and when you compare it to USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4, that's sitting at 40 gigs, so we have a nice little jump there. And it runs at X4 speeds instead of X3 like Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. In my experience, I've gotten much better performance over Oculink, and we'll do a little bit of testing in this video. But real quick, let's go ahead and take a look at the unit. As you can see up front here, we've got our dedicated power button. We also have Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 right here and our Oculink port. So these are right out of the front. Taking a look at the left hand side, we've got a little bit of ventilation going on. And over on the right, we don't have any. So this can actually stand vertically if you wanted it to. Actually it looks pretty cool like that. And around back, we've got our power input three full-size USB 3.2 ports. We also have a full-size SD 4.0 reader, two full-size 1.4a display ports, and a full-size HDMI 2.1 port. So this also adds a lot of extra I.O. to whatever we're going to be plugging it into. And taking a look at the internal specs, like I mentioned, this is using the AMD Radeon RX 7600 MXT. We've got 32 compute units, 4,096 stream processors, 32 RT cores, 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM running at a 128-bit bus. It's got a base clock of 1500 megahertz, a game clock of 2300, and a boost up to 2615. In this video, we're going to be testing out the G1 on two different devices. First up, we've got the GPD WinMax 2. This is the Ryzen 7000 series version, so we do have Oculink built into the unit itself, but you can add Oculink to basically anything that has an extra M.2 slot. But again, this also works over USB 4, so uh, you can use it with many different devices. And as you can see, the cables that come included with the G1 are pretty long, so you can basically set this up however you want. A lot longer than older Thunderbolt 3 was. And for this, I'm going to be utilizing both of these ports, but I'm not going to plug this into a USB 4 port because then it would detect it as a USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 dock. We don't want that, but we do want to add power to the GPD WinMax 2. Next up, we've got the Oculink cable, one end into the G1, other end into the WinMax 2. We can kind of rearrange these cables so it's not all over the place. And you could go with shorter cables if you want to, but I'm glad they added these kind of extra long ones. And before we power the device up, we want to make sure that the G1 is on. So we'll power that up, then we can power up our device, give it a few seconds to boot up. And the only reason I have this USB 4 plugged into the 3.2 port on the WinMax 2 is just to keep that battery charged. But once everything's booted up, we've got both displays working, the internal display and our external monitor. And here it is. So usually when I'm running an external GPU, I like just showing up on one display. So I'm going to go into my display settings and we're going to swap this all over to the second monitor, our external monitor. 
Now we're still using the CPU in the WinMax 2, and if you're not familiar with the 2023 version of this device, it's got the Ryzen 7 7840U. 8 Zen 4 cores, 16 threads, and we've also got the RDNA 3 based 780M iGPU. But since we're connected to this eGPU, we don't have to worry about that right now because we've got that RX 7600M. And this definitely pairs up really nicely with that Ryzen 7 7840U. And I'll show you real quick, if we open up GPU-Z, you can see that this is running at PCIe X4 4.0 instead of 3.0 like Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 would run at. And it might not sound like a lot on paper, but it does make a huge difference in real world gaming. And the main thing that it kind of eliminates totally is that eGPU stutter. A lot of the higher end eGPUs that I've tested using a Thunderbolt 3 dock over USB 4 just stutter all the way through. Some games are basically unplayable, but with Oculink, I've been getting absolutely amazing performance. I went ahead and tested Horizon Zero Dawn's built-in benchmark. We're at 1080p ultra settings and performance here is outstanding. I mean, just take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner. Got that 7600M paired up with that 7840U APU. And this does make a really potent little combo. I was surprised at how well this works just straight out of the box. I haven't done any kind of tweaking. And at the end of this benchmark, we had an average of 112 FPS a maximum of 207, and we had that minimum of 26. Now this will require a little bit of tweaking, but as you can see, we are at ultra quality 1080p with this setup. Next thing I wanted to test real quick was Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p high settings. I got an average of 91 FPS on this little setup. Really impressed by the performance here, and this is right on par with a lot of the benchmarks that I've seen online. Most gaming laptops with this GPU, the 7600M, are averaging around 96 FPS with Cyberpunk 2077 at high settings. I mean, so we're right on par there using this over Oculink, getting some really great performance. The next device I wanted to test this on was one of my favorite new mini PCs. This is the Minus Forum UM790. It's got the Ryzen 9 7940HS, and it doesn't have Oculink. Now you could add it over one of the M.2 slots internally, but we're going to be using this over USB 4. Taking a look at GPU-Z, you can see that this is running at X4 3.0 instead of X4 4.0 like it would over Oculink. But this little PC does have a more powerful CPU than the WinMax 2 does, and we can actually run it at a higher TDP. This is running at 65 watts instead of 35 maximum on that GPD WinMax 2, so it does offer better CPU performance. But since we're connected over USB 4, you'll see the difference in this benchmark. Horizon Zero Dawn using the same exact settings that we did with the WinMax 2, except we're connected over USB 4 instead of Oculink. And remember, we do have a more powerful CPU here, so in theory we should be getting around the same or a little better performance. But that's not the case, because Oculink does win over USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4. At the end of this, we had an average of 80 FPS, a maximum of 191, and a minimum of 17. If you remember, on the WinMax 2, we had an average of 112 with the exact same settings. Now, I've got a lot more testing that I want to do on different devices. We'll also compare directly on the WinMax 2, Oculink versus Thunderbolt 4. But if you've got the WinMax 2, I would definitely use Oculink. I know it's going to perform better. But so far, this is definitely one of my favorite little eGPU setups, and I can't wait to get some more testing out of the way. I've noticed that I'm getting better performance over USB 4 than I did with a Thunderbolt dock and a more powerful GPU. So since this is a true USB 4 dock, I think it's going to give us better compatibility with USB 4 devices. And you can always pick up a little adapter like this on Amazon. It's M.2 to Oculink, so if you've got an extra M.2 slot in your mini PC or even a handheld, you can put one of these puppies right in there and plug Oculink directly into this device. I'll definitely have a couple more videos coming up testing this method here because it could be a really great option for somebody with a mini PC that just wants to add a little extra GPU power. Really glad to see somebody coming to market with something like this. Love the form factor. Super small. We've got that USB 4 and Oculink, so we have several different ways to connect this to different devices. Awesome for mini PCs with USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4. And of course, you could always set it up with your handheld in desktop mode as long as it has USB 4. Let me know in the comments below what you want to see this connected to. We will be testing some Linux on certain devices. I just kind of need to get everything together. We'll be testing it over Oculink and USB 4 with different devices. 
But if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave a few links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look video at the GPD G1. If you've got any questions, let me know. And like always, thanks for watching.